Six and a half years ago, John F. Kennedy set this nation on a course toward the moon. This morning, three Americans, Frank Borman, Jim Lovell, and William Anders, are on the verge of making man's first journey to the moon. The countdown to liftoff for Apollo 8 is now T minus 50 minutes and counting. Weather appears fine, and now only a last minute technical failure can prevent the start of the greatest adventure on which man has ever embarked. The countdown is T minus 39, 39 minutes to the launch of Apollo 8. Uh, we do have a, another announcement coming up from Mission Control. The voice will be that of Jack King. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control at T minus 39 minutes and counting. T minus 39, and we are go for our countdown for the Apollo 8 mission to the moon at this time. Just uh, in progress as uh, this announcement came up was another key milestone in our countdown preparations, the power transfer test. This is uh, where we go from external power to the flight batteries aboard the Saturn V launch vehicle to assure that they are all working properly. Then in order to preserve these batteries, we return again to external power. Uh, the final switch to internal power on the batteries occurs at about the 50-second mark in the count. There are some 14 batteries in the Saturn V. The Apollo 8 crew of astronauts Frank Borman, Jim Lovell, and Bill Anders standing by in the spacecraft as this test is in progress. T-minus 38 minutes, 6 seconds and counting. This is launch control. With launch scheduled for 7.51 a.m. Eastern Time, and it is now 7.13 Eastern Time. This uh, Saturn V will boost the Apollo spacecraft into orbit around the Earth. It is scheduled to orbit twice and then take off for the moon, uh, some uh, two hours and 55 minutes after launch. The moon commitment is made. Two and a half days out to the moon, a day in orbit around the moon, and then uh, two days back for a landing in the Pacific on Friday morning. Something about those three fellows, Frank Borman is a colonel in the Air Force. He's 40 years old. He's a West Pointer. He was born in Gary, Indiana, but he grew up in Tucson, Arizona, where his family took him because he had a lot of trouble with mastoid and tonsils and that sort of thing. And the Tucson air apparently cleared it up. But uh, uh, he went on to uh, become a high school football quarterback on a state championship team. He helped earn money to go to West Point uh, by picking berries, we're told. He was a member of the National High School Scholastic Society. He went to West Point and at 150 pounds, he could hardly play big league football, but he was manager of uh, the West Point championship teams of those years. He was married to uh, his old high school sweetheart, Susan Bugby of Tucson. He has two boys, Frederick, seven, and Edwin, 15. Uh, he flew on Gemini 7 as the command pilot. He's been up once before. Jim Lovell, who is the uh, spacecraft uh, pilot, is a captain in the Navy. He's 40 also, just a few days uh, younger than Borman, as a matter of fact. He went to Annapolis. He was born in Cleveland. He grew up in Milwaukee. He married his high school sweetheart, Marilyn Gerlich. They have two boys and two girls. And incidentally, uh, Mrs. Lovell and the three oldest children, uh, for Barbara, 15, and James, 13, Susan, 10, they're here at the Cape to watch this launch. Jeffrey, three, stayed home. Jeffrey, incidentally, was born uh, just a few days after Lovell came back from the longest mission man has ever spent in space, a 14-day mission of Gemini 7. He also flew on Gemini 12, and he's got more time in space than any other individual, 425 hours and 10 minutes, almost 18 days in space. He's seen, incidentally, 224 sunrises, and now he's going to add 10 lunar sunrises as he uh, makes this mission successfully, as is hoped, of course. Bill Anders, who is the baby and the rookie of this bunch, is a major in the Air Force, also an Annapolis graduate. He's 35 years old. He was born in Hong Kong. His father was in the Navy, a commander, badly wounded in the Panay, the gunboat on the Yangtze that you may, rem may remember if you're old enough. Uh, Valerie Ford is his wife. Uh, 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 she was uh, uh, from California, uh, also a early sweetheart to Bill Anders. They have five children, four boys and a girl. Valerie is watching this mission, the first flight of her husband from their home in Houston. Incidentally, he, besides graduating from Annapolis, uh, got a master's degree in nuclear engineering. As 
an expert in that area. There's countdown now, T minus 32 minutes, a little over a half hour to the launch of this great Saturn V and its precious cargo of these three astronauts about whom we've just been talking. There was a little problem yesterday in uh, the liquid uh, oxygen supply to the fuel cells. That was cleared up. And then the worry all during the early hours of the night was whether the weather was going to be good today or not. Fog came in yesterday and blacked out in the early morning hours this launch pad. That wouldn't do for launch. They want to have visibility. They want to be able to see the rocket as it rises the first 2,000 feet, getting a radar track on it uh, through a visual bore sight uh, so that uh, no ground scatter effect could interfere with that radar because that radar is necessary to help uh, trigger and decide on whether they go to an escape mode in case anything goes wrong in those first few seconds of flight. And the count is T minus 29 minutes and counting toward the 7.51 a.m. Eastern Time launch of the Apollo 8. Let me tell you something about what you're going to see in those dramatic moments as this Saturn V lifts off from pad 39A here at Merritt Island, no longer Cape Kennedy or Cape Canaveral. We've moved over to Merritt Island for the moon port. That's an island uh, right adjoining the Cape uh, between the Banana and Indian rivers, a few miles from the Cape where all the previous manned launches have taken place. The Saturn V is the world's most powerful rocket, as we've said. 8,850,000 pounds of thrust in its three stages. Now, the best the Soviets have built, we believe, up to now is two to three million pounds of thrust. So we've far surpassed them, although there are reports that they may be building a rocket of 10 million pounds thrust. We don't expect to go any larger than the Saturn. It can do everything we want to do in space for the immediate future. The Saturn has flown twice before, the Saturn V, that is, in November 1967, its first flight. And here, three miles from the launch pad, uh, you may recall, if you were with us for that, our window shook so that uh, we thought it was coming in on us and our roof tiles uh, collapsed uh, in some places. It was uh, quite a blast. Uh, there, that will be repeated again today. Uh, the second flight of the Saturn V was on April 4th of 68. The November 67 flight was 100% perfect. Everything went well, all three stages. The April flight was not so. Two of the J-2 engines uh, in the second stage failed, and the single J-2 engine in the third stage failed. Uh, they determined that it was a broken fuel line uh, shaken loose uh, in space, and uh, they have replaced that now, quite obviously, with a different type of fuel line, and it is believed that all will go well this time. Uh, this, uh, uh, th that second flight uh, uh, was a disappointment, but uh, they're so confident now of their engineering capabilities that they are not concerned about another unmanned flight of the Saturn V before committing man, as they have now for this flight today. The Saturn V weighs 6,219,000 pounds at liftoff. No such weight has ever been lifted off the surface of the Earth before. It has the thrust equal to 100 million horsepower. Uh, if you can believe that, 130 million horsepower, I think, is the actual figure. It uses some 531,000 gallons of its fuel in just the two and a half minutes of flight that the first stage is uh, operative. That's uh, something like uh, 3,600 gallons a second. You can get a lot of green stamps for that at your corner service station. The flights today, uh, what you will be seeing in the, in the ignition, uh, the ignition takes place nine seconds, 8.9 seconds to be precise, before the actual liftoff. Two large arms are holding the rocket on the ground to build up the power before those arms come open and the rocket is on its own to take off. So there are 8.9 seconds of fire before you see the actual liftoff and then that slow, majestic rise uh, from the pad. I'll tell you more about it, but here's an announcement from Mission Control. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control at T-minus 26 minutes and counting. We are proceeding at this time. In progress at this time, we are pressurizing the propellants for the spacecraft uh, engine systems that would be used in a space environment. Astronaut Jim Lovell, the man who sits in the middle of the seat and who is the command module pilot, is reporting back to spacecraft test conductor Dick Prof Prophet on the status of the propellants. We pressurize these propellants, propellants with helium. 
The countdown has been going very well since it was picked up at 10.51 p.m. Eastern Standard Time last night, shortly before we resumed the count of the 9.8 million pound mobile service structure was moved to its park position some 7,000 feet from the pad. About an hour later, we began the propellant loading of the Saturn V launch vehicle. In some four and a half hours, we loaded uh, close to a million gallons total of liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen aboard the three stages of the Saturn V. We now have a vehicle standing 360 feet, 363 feet, that is, and weighing 6.2 million pounds on the launch pad here at the Kennedy Space Center. We're continuing to top off the liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen supplies uh, because they must be maintained under extremely cold temperatures. They will continue to boil off, and we continue to replenish the supply down to the final minutes of the count. 